In a market obsessed with the size of sensors, Panasonic proposes a radical return to efficiency. AG AC90 is a prosumer camera, which brings a lot of functions and features to be found on significantly more expensive models, such as XLR sound inputs and manual control thereof, at a very good price. Instead of one big sensor, Panasonic proposes the traditional 3MOS backside illuminated 1 on 4.7 inches and 2.19 megapixel sensors. Regardless, the camera behavior in low lighting conditions is unexpectedly positive, with reduced noise, astounding definition, excellent sharpness, and zero aliasing. Obviously, a substantial contribution is brought to the table through the well thought out optics. Starting from an opening of 29.8 mm, they reach a maximum of 357.6 mm, equivalent 35, which results in an optical zoom of 12x, more than enough for most shot scenarios. The lens is very bright, with exposure steps between 1.5 and 2.8, and extremely efficient stabilization. This is controlled using three rings placed along the lens assembly, which manually modifies focus, zoom, and exposure. Except the zoom, which is a hint too slow and imprecise the other two controls adjust impeccably. Another innovative gimmick is the incorporation of neutral filters, known as NDs, and of the auto gain for exposure. This means that under a diaphragm index of 1.5 the game activates automatically and over 11 the neutral filters engage progressively. What it means is that the otherwise excellent lens, when used under extraordinary light conditions, either dark or bright, will go outside its intended use specifications. The availability of the XLR connectors and the manual sound switches is a welcome feature. The camera also features an onboard 5.1 microphone with good quality zoom. As far as build quality is concerned, this model is as solid as it is light. This doesn't mean cheap or low quality. The materials are good and the camera is compact and well balanced. The access to the controls is easy and the side panel contains just about all the direct control functions of the different settings. The buttons are well placed on the body without the risk of accidental presses while retaining functionality. The camera also possesses a switch offering the transition from manual to automatic and back, with the auto mode offering a surprisingly precise and proper control of the main functions, exposure, white balance and so on. Another aspect that draws attention is the display. This is somewhat embedded in the camera handle, is retractable and implicitly protected against occasional accidents that may befall it during usage or transport, and the ingenuity of the solution exponentially increases the ergonomics of the camera as a whole. The display also brings an extra surprise. It's the first touchscreen to be used in a prosumer-oriented model of the Japanese manufacturer. I'm declaring my hesitance when it comes to this kind of solutions, but the implementation is good in this particular case. The screen is responsive and its utility in controlling the camera is undeniable. The brightness is good even in outside conditions, though still excluding a midday tropical beach. Although fingerprints remain the eternal enemy of touchscreen displays, the reduced resolution of the visor will however impose the usage of the screen most of the time. This camera's menu is one of the most intuitive I've ever seen. This menu allows the user to choose recording for formats, Full HD at 50 or 25 progressive frames per second, or PAL 576 interlaced at 25 frames per second. There are no 24 frames per second options on the European or Asia-oriented PAL versions of the camera, nor is the intermediate 720p format offered. The codec is AVC Cam, an improved AVC HD. For the more pretentious user in regards to compression, the camera offers an HDMI connector outputting ProRes 422 to an external recorder. One of the most important aspects to be satisfied by a good camera is the flawless integration into the owner's workflow. In other words, the performance of the camera loses relevance if the editing of the material becomes a nightmare. From this point of view, AG AC90 passed the test. After a short research time, I was able to seamlessly integrate the camera into some of the most popular editing solutions on the market. Final Cut Pro 10 recognized the format instantly and importing and editing is easily accessible. The same stayed true for Adobe Premiere CS6, both editing solutions recognizing the format natively and not requiring any conversions. For about 1,700 euros, the AG AC90 is undeniably a good bang for the buck in its price range.